policies. Dear guests of the Moscow Urban Forum 2019, I would like to invite to this stage the participants of the plenary session, Quality for Everyone, Balanced Development of uh, Cities, Mayor of Kuala Lumpur, Noor Hisham Ahmad Dalan. Chairman of the Web RF Igor Shuvalov. Managing Director of the Yandex Group of Companies, Tigran Hudaverdian. Cinematic Director, the founder of Bazilev Studio, Timur Bekmambetov. The co-founder and partner of the Architectural Wow House Bureau, Oleg Shapiro. And the moderator of our plenary session, uh, founder and the managing partner of uh, every co company, Vladimir Salavyov. And Mayor of Moscow, Sergei Sabyanin. Well, let's engage in today's work without any uh, further ado. It's the second day of our forum, and uh, we so far have discussed the the situation of uh, mega cities, global cities, uh, metropolitan areas, and today we've come to the point when we are discussing um, districts, uh, districts, neighborhoods, which should be the one foundational element of uh, be it a Moscow or any other global city in the world. Always we're thinking about cities and cities uh, take to the forefront uh, while the neighborhoods and districts usually stay in the shadow of global discussions and plenary sessions and very often we do not even notice them as the uh, independent administrative uh, unit or something which is uh, requires uh, our thinking, our planning and uh, development. The city of Moscow has been evolving all the time throughout its history, all the nine centuries. I'm trying to work my clicker. And the last 150 years after the abolition of serfdom in Russia, Moscow has uh, expanded 36 times over millions and millions of people came to stay in Moscow and the former towns and settlements which Moscow encapsulated. They seemingly lost their identities or totally dissolved in this huge new megapolis. However, as a matter of fact, this is not quite so especially back in the 1990s when there was a new administrative and territorial division of Moscow has been introduced, which is more uh, became closer to the historic names of those territories and those places, we launched basically a reverse process of uh, 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 identification of the Moscow districts. District in the city of Moscow is basically let's say, uh, would be equivalent to the uh, small or even mid-sized uh, town or city in Russia from one to 200,000 people in each district of Moscow. I myself uh, used to believe that it is very important uh, to have the overall fabric of the city, overall connectivity of all districts and of all areas in Moscow. Of course, it is very important to uh, develop different services, um, improvement, landscaping throughout the whole uh, territory of the city. And this is the way we were working. We were trying to make sure that all uh, social facilities 
would be located within the walking distance uh, for the Moscovites and the best improvement. Uh, the best improvement should be done right where people uh, are living. And uh, a lot has been done throughout the last years. So we've seen not only the center of Moscow uh, changed, but also the periphery in Moscow. As for some positive changes, they have taken place in all the districts of Moscow. We've seen more jobs created. We've seen more parks and um, and uh, green areas within the walking distance. Uh, transportation access has become much better. Social uh, availability. By the way, speaking about the um, daycare centers, preschool facilities, uh, outpatient hospitals, Moscow uh, has uh, overtaken the most uh, wealthy cities of the world, such as New York and London. Uh, we have certain successes, and we take pride in them. But uh, still, whenever we meet the residents of Moscow, I was under impression that uh, we are lacking something in what we do. We're doing something wrong. This is what I thought. And uh, whenever you you talk to people, you hear their um, requests, let's uh, improve this city, let's uh, add some amenities in this park, let's build here the new uh, preschool facility. And every time you feel that this is a very divergent type of work without any single and systemic approach on how to enhance and develop this territory. And you're left with the impression that people living in this district and communities and uh, not only the Moscovites as a general term, but people who live in this particular street, in this particular area, they, they're they proud of where they live, they love this place, they know the history of this place. And according to some polls, uh, about 60% of uh, people who live in a particular district throughout the year do not even move out, uh, let's say, to go to the center of Moscow. They stay in their district on a day-to-day -day basis. We do have the general plan for uh, the Moscow development. It's uh, big, it's huge, it's bulky, uh, sort of like a master plan for developing the city. But um, uh, ne we do not have neither general plan nor master plan for uh, developing uh, each of uh, Moscow's districts. And I had a full impression that this niche has to be filled, that uh, we, in a very systemic way, have to uh, look into developing Moscow territories and regions, not based on the industry principle, okay, like we have to build more schools, more, more preschool facilities and more parks, but I'm speaking about systemic approach of looking at every territory as like a, a town within a city or a city within a city. And this uh, type of uh, new approach on, on um, evolution of the Moscow districts uh, I feel that this is what it, what is very very much needed and required by uh, by the residents of our city, and it is one of the major uh, line of our work for the years to come. What do Moscovites want? Whenever we begin to analyze, what are the problems and and the pain points uh, with uh, people who live in the in the city, and what has to be done? It became very obvious that we have to develop the basic infrastructures, so we have to add uh, public amenities, we have to uh, enhance uh, capabilities for the city dwellers. And it's also very important to identify uh, the uh, unique identity, unique uh, look to each uh, district. We've broken down this work into two blocks. One would be the quality uh, of uh, services and the high quality urban environment and its uniqueness. Meaning, uh, meaning the um, improvements, amenities, um, adding uh, public spaces and uh, and uh, improving territories around the transportation hubs and metro, building sport facilities and venues, uh, expanding green places, parks, uh, squares and boulevards and so on. And of course, it's about uh, comfort, meaning a uh, very uh, comprehensive approach of uh, building and developing every uh, territory to make sure that people have a very good transportation system, uh, shops, uh, high quality housing and uh, workplaces, uh, lest they have to uh, go out to the city center or to other remote locations. But for them to be able to find jobs as close to their housing as possible, it's a leisure activities and social infrastructure. 
and we absolutely have to um, emphasize the uniqueness of uh, each district in Moscow, historic facilities, and the new uh, new facilities have to emphasize the uniqueness, unique look to each uh, district and territory. We have decided that in each uh, district of Moscow, we will uh, build a uh, uh, territorial master plan, which will be the very uh, dynamic document based on the recommendations of uh, both people living in Moscow and urbanists and professionals. This master plan will be like a living and breathing fabric of each district, which will be um, um, improved uh, and changed based on the city um, residents' recommendations and requests. Next one, please. Just to give you one example of how it may look in reality, it's a great district, uh, Southern Butovo. It's a typical bedroom community. It's a huge uh, district, about 200,000 people who are living in this area, uh, specified by uh, standardized uh, communities and neighborhoods. Much has been done in this community in previous years, uh, nevertheless. To be able to say that we have achieved a very unique feel and look to this uh, uh, community, probably this is not the case. We begin to talk to the locals. What is missing? It turned out that they were missing uh, sport facilities, and we have made a decision that we'll be building additional uh, sport uh, complexes. There was no connectivity to some roads, and we've made a decision to build a new road. Local residents uh, felt uh, discomfort uh, waiting for public transportation at the bus stops and train stops uh, because of the low light conditions. And and we decided to make these uh, bus stops uh, very modern and give them a different feel. There is not enough schools and, and you know, preschool centers, daycare centers. We decided to build them too. And all of this is very important and very much needed, but again, Speaking about connectivity of this uh, of this community, it's uh, it's unity, it's uniqueness. This all these things were not there. It still remained a huge territory, um, populated with a lot of standardized housing, uh, broken down into quarters, into districts, into local streets. Having been visiting this place uh, many times, I was looking at this territory right in the middle of this uh, area. Going through all this place, there was a very huge empty space, uh, and there was an overpass of the metro cutting through it. Not to say that this place was ugly. No, it was clean. It was very tidy. There were some uh, pathways even. But generally speaking, this whole gigantic space in this community was uh, tearing the whole fabric of this community apart, and it was like fragmenting it into some localized clusters which were not interconnecting. It was not uh, unification, but it was uh, disintegration. We've had uh, many conversations with the local residents. What can we do? It went on for two years, and eventually we have made, um, we've adopted such a project which um, would emphasize uh, creating quite a big and quite interesting sport and recreation park in this area, which would be uh, commensurate with the Gorky Park in central Moscow. And within two years, we have been implementing this project and making it a reality. And uh, South Butova has now received a unique territory, which does not separate uh, this space, but quite the opposite. It pulls itself together. It uh, combines it and makes this place unique. You cannot even call it a bedroom community anymore because this is not it. Uh, it's uh, truly a high quality and very good uh, area, thanks to this uh, binding element in the center. Of course, to be able to say it's perfectly done, it's, uh, it's all very good there. No, but uh, this is the progress. This is the uh, line of development to make sure that every uh, district of Moscow has its own street, its own pedestrian areas, its own boulevards, its own park, uh, which would combine, uh, let's say, a place for a festival where you can hold uh, regional events or area-specific events uh, during the day of the city to do the uh, seasonal festivals, to do some uh, trade fairs. All of this is very important and uh, high quality nucleus of uh, sport facilities, uh, children's playground and public spaces, all of these things are very much needed. We 
should not expect until uh, this unique planning solutions will be done because uh, it may take years. This year, we have doubled our efforts in, in um, adding amenities to Moscow regions, making them more beautiful. In parallel with that, we begin to develop master plan. And I would like to invite uh, Moscovites to become the part of the of uh, the group discussing these master plans and as well as inviting all professionals to be the part of it. We have begun with a hashtag, I love our city, I love my street, and today we're saying about uh, uh, loving one's district. I love my district and my neighborhood. And um, it's about living, it's about breathing, it's about uh, maintaining healthy lifestyle in this big megapolis, which um, as a result of these endeavors uh, can become better, uh, the, uh, can become closer to uh, Muscovite's hearts, can become more friendly, more uh, open uh, for every person who stays, uh, stays in a big city. It's about making people feel this is the place where I want to be. This is the place where they would want to live uh, forever and their children and their grandchildren also stay in this place. They're tying up their future to this place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sergei Simonovich. With this, we continue the discussion. I would like to now give the floor to the mayor of Kuala Lumpur, Norhi Sham Ahmad Dahlan. Prior to this session, we had a very interesting discussion with him. We spoke about their amazing achievements, free public transport. He told me that in the past six months, they were able to reduce traffic by 6,000 cars per week. So they have very many, very interesting solutions. So I have a question. You had this interesting vision, strategic plan for the development of Kuala Lumpur for 10, maybe 20 years, which expires this year. You were able to work on development of Central Bad, where seven and a half million people live, so it's the agglomeration of Kuala Lumpur. Nonetheless, you manage to find balance between central and districts and those that are on the periphery. So how did you manage to achieve that? And what are your further plans? Because as this strategy expires, a new one should come into place. Thank you, uh, your moderator and uh, your excellency. For Kuala Lumpur, this is what uh, I want to tell before answering the question. I want to talk a uh, little bit about the, what happened, uh, project for better quality for everyone in balancing urban development. I would like to thank His Excellency Mayor Sergei Sovananin for giving me this opportunity to be able to witness the Reun Moscow Urban Forum, a class of their own that has been organized wonderfully every year and fortunately this year. I am able uh, to participate in this grand forum. Ladies and gentlemen, Kuala Lumpur being a dynamic and vibrant city and one of the most rapidly growing mega city in Southeast Asia, we are expecting a rise in population by the year 2030 from 1.8 million to 2.45 million people. So it's a tough job to do and it's everyone's responsibility to ensure that we will be able to live in the city that is well prepared with resilient infrastructure and sustained community lifestyle. Based on your question just now, your moderator, this planning is for Kuala Lumpur well-being. This is more on the people-centric so that 
the people in Kuala Lumpur, whether they are rich or poor, they can use public transport and to make sure that the Kuala Lumpur City Hall, we are doing for the we are doing for the uh, Go KL for free buses, so everybody can use the bus, public transport, to go to work. So from January this year until uh, last month, nearly we make sure that first stop and last stop to make sure everybody to reduce the congestion in Kuala Lumpur and this uh, happening to the people of Kuala Lumpur so that they can uh, live in the city center with more affordable for their every uh, livelihood. So I want to continue. To be a city that is able to provide assurance of resilience, sustainability, tangentially towards the people, it is important that Kuala Lumpur City Hall base our project direction to be aligned with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, that is SDGs, and the three transformation commitments of the new urban agenda. By 2030, Kuala Lumpur should be able to provide universal access to safe, inclusive and accessible green and public spaces, especially for women and children, older persons and persons with disabilities. But in order for Kuala Lumpur to plan for 2040, a number of initiatives have to be done in order to overcome these few challenges. There is housing its populations. There is a mismatch between demand and supply. The second is a traffic and transportation issues. Road congestion and low ridership on public transportation. Difficult to change habits and mindsets of the citizens. Three, green public open, open space a mismatch between population and health standards. And the fourth, city resilience to adapt to changing of climate conditions. And the fifth, high cost of living. And the sixth is rapid technological changes, such as IoT in managing cities and impact on the equality of the life of its citizens. Yeah. Maybe, would you, would you like? It's a green button. Okay. Thank you. This is what Kuala Lumpur for the information of the factory of Kuala Lumpur. These are challenges in Kuala Lumpur right now and in future. This is what we are trying to do in Kuala Lumpur. It's a more on productivity, innovative, inclusive, interconnected. This is more on transportation and traffic, integrated and sustainable, low carbon and resilient, and healthy and vibrant. This uh, in Kuala Lumpur itself is a more sustained, livable, and harmonious because we are multiracial, multicultural. Society. So this part of that uh, that I can show to you all, and then is a more on balanced strategies to be taken by 2040, and we pledge to turn Kuala Lumpur into a productive and innovative city. It will become the focal point for business trade and strengthen Kuala Lumpur as a global city. We shall provide and assist more small and medium entrepreneurs, support for economic network in the city and upgrade the con connectivity between one place to another to be more feasible and accessible. This will help the citizens of Kuala Lumpur to prosper in a way that there are more economic and job opportunities 
for everyone. We aim, we aim to also make Kuala Lumpur a city that is inclusive and interconnected. We will also help to upgrade mobility and provide access and connection for the citizen to ensure interconnected transportation system. This will upgrade their quality of life and we foresee an emergence of communities with great values enhanced contributing for a healthier future for to the citizen and environment. Besides that, we plan to make Kuala Lumpur a city that is healthy and vibrant. We shall provide more green public spaces and request private owners of lands and buildings to contribute to free access for citizens to enjoy these green spaces. We shall also adopt best practices for balanced quality of neighborhood design on, and also for mixed development areas. We also plan to update pedestrian walks and our bicycle lanes so that the citizen can opt for a low carbon com emission option compared to motorized vehicles and thus can help in help reducing GSC emission in the city. However, I believe now most of the cities are aware their responsibilities are not just to mainly focus on people per se, but also how policy can wholesomely integrate between the society, economic prosperity, and ensuring the preserv preservation of the environment. It is important for Kuala Lumpur to provide plans and policy that cater to integrate the main players of the city, the citizens who would eventually help in sustaining the city and improve their quality of life economically, mentally, physically, and environmentally. In, con in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Great Day House Hall, Kuala Lumpur takes into consideration of all challenges and strategies in planning for better, sustained, resilient, and livable mega city in the heart of Southeast Asia. We are working, we are working hard in ensuring a balanced development for the city and hopefully that by prioritizing the integration between society, economic stability and environment will lead us to enjoy a more sustained, those livable and more harmonious life for everyone. Thank you. Spine Sibu. Thank you very much, dear friends. I would like to now continue with Moscow's experience and give the floor to Oleg Shapira, who is co-founder and partner of Bauhaus Architecture Bureau. Bauhaus, well, the name implies that all your projects should be wow projects. But if we look at Gorky Park, Krimska Embankment, uh, Strelka, it is indeed a, those are indeed wow projects. By the way, that oil park in Kapotnia, is that attractive? Sergei Semanovich mentioned that dwellers of particular districts are proud of their neighborhoods, and you can, based on this pride, you can create points of attraction. So could you Please share your experience and how you could use that these points of attraction, points of gravity. Thank you. Good morning. So, what should be done to make a public space vibrant? Well, we believe first we need to understand who the target audience is. Well, an obvious answer is it's a public space, so it's for the general public. But. In every district, different people live. And in different districts, well, districts differ from each other. And it's one side of the coin, and we always work with sociologists. But another side is that every district has its potential. You mentioned Kapotnia. Well, Krimska embankment, which is in the very center, is that, that connects Tretyakovka and Gorky Park. It's the central part. It's different from Kapotnia Park, which is next to an oil refinery, and tens of thousands of people live there. It also borders with 
Moscow River. There is also electricity grid that crosses the park. Well, it's it's not as good, but people do live there. So first, we need to identify what's special about this trade tree. We thought about it, and we figured out that people jog there, people roller skate there, and people have to cross the power grid, and but it's still alive. There are birds that nest, river embankment. So we now clearly see how this territory is different, what makes it unique. It's got its limitations, but we need to make sure that people that live in that area use it on a daily basis. Therefore, we need to understand how it's used and during the day. So in the morning, people that spend time there are joggers. Then in the midday, these are grandmas with their grandchildren. And then in the evening, teenagers will probably come. So we need to think of all groups of citizens, even those that are usually neglected. So although they might seem separated in time and space, we need to unite them. We need to find something that would unite them in that public space. So once we've done that, if we do that, there's a chance that a public space will be a success. At least that's what we're trying to do. Can you think of an example of when it's difficult to find point of attraction. There are obvious cases where there's a beautiful park or a river. But have you ever been in a situation when it takes a lot of effort to find something attractive, you know, something that locals themselves would be unaware of? Oh, with lots of such stories. For instance, right now, we work with Donstroy in Ramenki district. It is going to be a new district built from scratch. It's going to be more or less standard, as every modern housing project is. But we need to make it different. We need to make it special. So we thought about it, and we figured out there used to be uh, a farm there that would grow apples, had lots of fruit tree gardens. So with that in mind, we decided to create fruit gardens in the newly built housing district because different fruit trees bloom at different times and it will definitely be popular among new residents. So this is the idea and I hope that we'll get local residents engaged and we'll get them interested and preserve the memory of the old farm village of Ramenki. And by the way, it's very good when we are able to keep the old name. Igor Ivanovich, you as chairman of VEB, VEB is very much involved in different projects develop, related to the development of infrastructure, public spaces, promoting local businesses, etc. Yesterday, for instance, someone was saying that cities should become agents of growth for the economy. Uh, points of attraction for SMEs, but historically, all these big residential blocks are very similar. They're very much alike. We all know that movie where uh, someone who was drunk confused the district in Moscow and in Saint Petersburg. So, what new opportunities can be created for the business communities in cities and in those districts that are not exactly in the center? Thank you very much. I would like to start with what Alex Pire ended with. I still recall the times in Moscow where there were huge fruit gardens. Unfortunately, later, those ugly new buildings were built, and it, it was such a shame. And I, I very much appreciate that you, you're bringing fruit gardens back to Moscow. Thank you, you Mayor Sabanian, for inventing the forum. And I'm not just saying it as a compliment, there are a few forums that happened during the year, two or three at max, which I remember and contemplate throughout the year. Every time Urban Forum ends, I start 
thinking about what it's going to be like next year, because it really takes urban planning forward. And what we and the fact that we're talking about urban development, urban environment development, and economic systems that exist around is very much thanks to Sergei Sabianin and the Urban Forum that he has created. So I suppose uh, that urban planners should be grateful to Sergei Sabanin, not just as mayor of Moscow, but as author of this idea. I will always work closely with Sergei Sabanin, not just because we are colleagues, but also because We were both interested in the development of modern cities, and the topic became at some point relevant for the federal government. At some point, the Russian president uh, became interested in the subject, and at one of the four, he announced that modern cities, modern urban development is very relevant for the today's agenda. And right now, internationally, Despite all political challenges, we were able to find a format to interact with other major cities and countries and expert community on the topic of urban development. And this topic knows no boundaries, no borders, whatever your political affiliation might be. If we're talking about a city, about urban agenda, real work and real results are all that matters. A special council was set up, Council for the Development of Cities. I am a member of this council. Together with my colleagues, we, are, we co-chair it with Minister Areshkin and with the best and the brightest experts that work on that, including Fishman, Strelka. And we include uh, in there many different experts. It, it's looking great to uh, hold a different session. The last one had been the one in Nizhny Novgorod. I want to say that this is uh, Moscow was the beginning of this initiative. Uh, Vladimir, you're asking me the question which is not within my competence. I can uh, say all I want uh, about this as a person who lives in Moscow. But I want to say why I am, I am in the development corporation, in other development institutes, we've decided uh, to work on it as a top priority. You know that the legislation has been changed and the uh, VEP uh, RF is now the coordinator of the whole urbanism and the urban development topics, uh, but in close cooperation with our main institute, which is a DOM RF, uh, NSP corporation. Because no city would, would be sustainable without uh, small and medium business, and you wouldn't be able to make the city comfortable without uh, heavy business involvement. There is also Russian Export Center organization, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, people do not see any connection between the Export Center and the urban uh, environment. But one of their key PI, KPI is the, the increasing um, traffic of the foreign uh, tourists uh, into Russia is one of the is one of their um, KPI. It's not all about selling or exporting machinery and equipment. It's also about um, welcoming more people to come to Russia and to come to Moscow. So we are overseeing this topic in our community. How do we do it? Speaking of Moscow, uh, Sasha Plutnik has been staying in very close contact. and the, uh, We have held the contest of the best architects of Russia, where hundreds of the best uh, professionals came to take part in this place, and many of them have been employed later by the local and municipal governments. So we've launched this great contest with the Strelka Design Bureau, and um, we have identified the the, the best uh, facilities of the standard housing construction, which used to be called uh, economic housing. But now we move away from this theme, and we think that uh, what uh, some some built according to the cheapest standards could be attributed as the uh, econ economy class housing. But the modern housing um, meets all the demands of the modern city dwellers. And now the DOM RF is implementing all of these uh, ideas in the major municipalities and the, 
and the um, territories of Russia. We're working with MSP Corporation. They've had some agenda about uh, innovative uh, companies, uh, export-oriented companies. But now their focus has shifted about how to can we fill the streets with these all the amenities or all the nice things. And uh, for example, take Nikolsky Street in Moscow. It's a vivid example of how just one street can be transformed. And eventually, we have a totally different uh, feel and look about this place. We have this special fund about the single industry towns development. Irina Makeva was the initiator of this. Let's build in each city their own version of Nikolsky Street in Moscow. We have what we call in Russia mono cities or the single uh, industry towns. And uh, everybody is looking at Moscow and people say, you cannot repeat your success in smaller uh, cities. Yes. Yes, we can, is my answer. Of course, the local budgets are not comparable with that of Moscow, but in, even in a small town of uh, 50,000 people or 100,000 people, you can very quickly change local situation if you have the right idea of how to use correctly the local budgets that they have. And here the Moscow is, uh, is a trendsetter. And based on the Moscow experience in healthcare, in education, uh, in digital projects, uh, uh, Sergey uh, Sabianin and myself, we've had a conversation of how to export these products uh, into smaller cities and towns. And so our area of responsibility is providing clean water, uh, business projects about the process and solid waste, uh, water treatment facilities, uh, modern transportation sector. By the way, we're helping Moscow. One project of the Moscow rolling stock projects uh, and uh, that is a partner uh, on the Transmash holding. And uh, we and other group are making a big project about um, 20 agglomerations of how can we upgrade transportation system in 20 major uh, cities of Moscow. We are also building master plans on the modern housing, modern living quarters, and in cooperation with local mayors and governors, we are enhancing urban environments. We are going to be working with a local lot of architectural bureau. You know, we're heavily criticized for shifting towards the uh, Strelka uh, KB designs, but the Strelka is an organization which is most proactive and they're delivering um, the biggest number of products, uh, so everybody should not be feeling defeated about that. We don't have any subjective feeling about Sterilka. We're open for uh, cooperation with whoever would like to work with us, uh, whoever want to get any, any traction in cooperation with cities, and they have a good qualification. We're open to everyone. We are not trying to be exclusive, and I'm kindly asking all this. Uh, those who are criticizing us and Strelka uh, to be a little bit more moderate and considerate and to take more serious approach. We should not be um, um, staying antagonists. We have to concentrate our, our, our strength and move forward. And uh, the corporation has to learn how to work better, work in a different way. They're going to package separate businesses of how to make streets more livable. And we are going to use our own capital um, by buying buying back the shares, that, which will they'll be de delivering for these projects. So we have the, quite a versatile line of projects and ideas, very interesting work. And you know what? All these national projects that the federal government has been speaking about and the local authorities have been speaking about, all these mega projects have to be measured against real life the, of how the life in the city will change thanks to all these mega or big projects, how the, um, each person, each family will feel the impact, um, not only speaking about urban areas, but also about non-urban areas. Over 80 percent of population, about 80 percent of population um, are people living in, in urban areas. So this um, is the focus of all of our areas and joint uh, projects. By 2024, we will deliver specific numbers and we have to think more of how it will translate into best quality for um, each family, which will be affected by these projects. Thank you, Igor. Igor, yesterday the Minister uh, Vladimir, Ministry of Housing and the uh, util Public Utilities Sector has been saying that uh, each head of municipality will have 36 indicators by which they'll be measuring the level of comfort in their city. And today, as we were watching this uh, intro video reel, I really like the phrase, uh, do you want to stay in the city or do you want to leave from the city? That's the main question we have to ask people. I think that that uh, if in towns of 50 to 100,000 people, people will want to stay in these places, not to leave these places, like Sergei Sabianin said. 
it will be the unity of the different people. But it will be not in one agglomeration, but all over Russia. It will be amazing. But I have a different perspective. If people want to leave their town, uh, it's okay, they may leave. But uh, as long as other people want to come in and replace these people. It's not like you were born in Moscow and you absolutely have to spend all of your life and die in Moscow. No, people have a chance to move around, to meet their life uh, ideas and expectations in a high-quality urban environment. Some people like it small, some like it big, you know, some like it hot, and uh, some like St. Petersburg, some like Moscow, some like other places. So we simply have to make sure that uh, that, that that people should not die, that even smaller places should not see the decrease in population. This should be interesting for those who would like to come and live in these places. So, yeah, 36 KPI or indicators, uh, that's not my cup of tea. It's not quite correct, I should say. Life is changing very rapidly. And what yesterday was a right indicator, today may not be a right indicator anymore. It's all like on the fingertips, you know, life life is very rapid, life it is very fast today. What is a high quality urban environment? It has to be ch changing all the time. There will never be a city where you, you solve all the problems. It does not exist. But the Moscow government is uh, trying to address these challenges very well. They're fast. They're changing faster than anyone else. They're providing new opportunities. And I suppose that uh, each city, like we had been discussing, this this concept of eight, 880, the city should be comfortable for those who are 8 years old and 80 years old. And uh, irrespectively of the size, the, the challenge of the city management is to make sure that the city is comfortable, to make sure that people want to stay, and then it's up to each individual whether they want to stay or leave. Please invite me more often to these forums because I do not want to take more time from other speakers. Thank you. Well, uh, dear colleagues, a modern city would be impossible without a digital environment and digital infrastructure. And uh, now Moscow, as I think, um, is one of the best cities in the world. Very often some of my friends or visitors and guests, uh, having come from other countries, they are surprised at how well Moscow is doing in terms of Wi-Fi connectivity and all the digital services. Yes, you can basically do a lot of things um, from your phone, from your smartphone in Moscow. And sometimes we come to different cities and we are surprised that they do not have this uh, level of connectivity and Wi-Fi, you know, and internet connection and stuff. It became just the basic of our life. Tigran, I would like to ask you a question as a manager director of the manager, I, uh, one of the leading IT company in Russia, which is Yandex. You have a lot of services. How many services do you have in Yandex? And I've been flipping, flipping, flipping like you have tons of them. It's hard to imagine. I'm using some of the Yandex services, but not to that extent. What is for you as for the business representative uh, is important to build new urban services? What services can we see in the future and how they will impact our lives in cities? Good uh, morning. Thank you for inviting to this uh, great forum. Yes, indeed. Uh, Yandex is one of the biggest internet companies uh, in Russia. And it just so happened that you may say that uh, there is no this border of good and bad internet connection, which we may remember that uh, today technologies uh, and internet is really the part of our daily lives and it impacts our actions, our choices, our day-to-day -day living. And like any internet company, Yandex, uh, as of today, is a part of this whole ecosystem of uh, this day-to-day -day kind of events, routine events, which you do not even notice anymore as you are using your internet connectivity. And I've tried to uh, do my math and calculate um, how an average Muscovite is doing like actions uh, using the Yandex platforms. By actions, I mean uh, getting a taxi, finding some information, order your food over the internet or, you know, to make a trip, kind of macro actions. And it turned out that the average Moscow resident, uh, adults and older people, like 12 times a day they interact, they interact with Yandex uh, platform alone. Never mind all other digital services in our city, and this number may be like uh, 50 interactions a day with uh, internet services, maybe uh, maybe even more than that. But just imagine 50 interactions a day with uh, different urban services uh, using uh, Yandex or other online platforms. 
uh, why this is the case. Uh, we think that there are three components, the key components. Number one, and this is uh, very obvious in Moscow, not only in Moscow, it's, uh, it's an openness, openness of the city when the city is embracing digital innovations. Some projects are being pioneered and propelled by the city. Moscow is a number one city in the world in terms of car sharing penetration. Just imagine if uh, 15 years ago someone told you uh, please don't use your car anymore. You would probably say it's a utopia. I will never give up my car. I will always be, always be driving my car. If, uh, my friend came over to me and like uh, and like I've asked him like, do you need a parking space? He said no. I sold my car. I'm using car sharing, which is amazing. You could not have even imagined that some years ago. And um, we've built competitive environments. And there are many services and many other companies came to Moscow, implemented many other digital projects related to taxi and, and other projects. Some some uh, some platforms are not uh, being uh, promoted by the city, but the city is speaking about the um, open data. Um, you can use any digital maps. You can see a lot of venues. You can build your multi-model route across Moscow using your smartphone, and uh, you can save each minute of your time. You can move around very optimal thanks to open data. Because without open data, all of this would not be possible. The second uh, idea that a digital uh, should not be done just for the sake of the digital because oftentimes and unfortunately companies are get carried away and organizations and individuals they begin to digitize some you know some like things which do not any make sense in digitizing it's very important to keep in mind added value for yandex company added value is one of the biggest criteria can we improve uh, lives of people. If not, we are not even going to start a project. And the third thing I would like to say is the speed. I believe that we are in a hyper race today. You have to make decisions super fast. And um, today, competition, it is not about between Russian cities. It's a competition with all the global cities in the world. And all the creative people who live in Moscow today, they make decisions, should I stay in Moscow or should I move out uh, somewhere else? We do not even compare ourselves with St. Petersburg, uh, but with all the global cities and the speed of changes. Like it was just mentioned, the speed of decision making and moving forward is critically important. And uh, wrapping up, I would like to share about a small experiment which Yandex is uh, carrying out. It's a new service that we do in Hamovniki district at this peninsula. We've opened a service. Hopefully, it will be deployed across many other districts in Moscow. It's a super hyper fast food delivery. In 10 to 12 minutes, you can get your food delivered to your apartment. This service is in a test phase um, for about a month, and we have uh, several thousands of users. Any resident of Hamovniki district can use this uh, food delivery service. It's a miracle. I mean, you open your app, uh, Yandex uh, Lavka, and in 10 minutes, your food will be delivered to you. Fresh, quick, uh, which otherwise you had to go to the supermarket to buy. Why is it important? Tigran, you're advertising now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just wanted to say one thing about the uh, value added. These 10 minutes, it's not 10 minutes which you save in your life in different services. Uh, it's half an hour, which is critically important for any family to stay together, to hang out, not instead of just uh, doing your shopping. And we believe that digitalization is one of the KPIs of, uh, of digitalization, is saving your time, which, is, which means saving your life. Tigran, be honest. Uh, do you do special algorithms uh, to go to these special places? Somebody, somebody nudge me, ask him, ask him, like, do, does he use this, uh, his maps? Sometimes, you know, as you're sitting in a traf traffic jam, you're thinking, I wish I'd had a button, like I pushed the button and all the cars disappear on the street. But we know it would not be possible. So it's about the manual. No, I do not have uh, all, all the things in my map. It's all about algorithms. So you do not have this kind of buttons. Huh? Tigran, what is your favorite service? Uh, what do you use more often? Or what are you proud about? And you think, well, it's done on the global level. It's really, you really take pride in it. I would say that uh, all in all, it just so happened that in Russia, there are many companies which are internet companies, IT companies, and I'm very proud of them. I'm very proud that um, 
in Russia, we are using our social media. We have our own mailing system. And it's something which is totally uh, inaccessible to many people in the world. And Russia today is one of the superpowers, I would say internet super, internet superpowers. We have our own antivirus. Uh, we have our own search engines, many other services. So. I'm using all the Russian services and, and the non-Russian ones, like a Google, Facebook as well. But, but not everyone on the planet has such an accessibility and opportunity to use your like uh, services which would be made in your own country. It's Russia, China, US, and South Korea. I would say these are the four countries which have this kind of digital potential. Uh, it's a lot of companies in Russia. It's uh, Mail.ru, Kaspersky, Avito, Yandex, and many others. Thank you. We have discussed the issue of uh, digital environment. And now I would like to speak about culture. And I think Timur Bekmambetov is the movie director which, which does not need to be introduced. I want to ask you, Timur, the identity, quality of life um, can be identified by culture, by high culture, by urban culture, subcultures. and. Um, it's about having access to some very outstanding uh, events. It's classic. How can all this can be combined in a modern city? Because we, we are living in a very fast pace. New things come, old things stay or go. How can we assemble all this together? And a separate question is about the Soviet, old Soviet uh, construction and kind of districts. They have their own aura, their own feel to them, right? It's interesting that usually culture is the last topic to be discussed. Usually it's between culture and sport. You know, whenever people talk about things, they talk about culture uh, the last as a final point. Anyhow, I would like to uh, thank you for inviting me today. The very topic is very complex and, and I totally agree with you on the point that uh, the city is um, is uh, developing um, in different ways, in different paces. Some uh, districts are lagging behind. And it's a big problem because um, having no cultural agenda or cultural content in some areas of Moscow results in losing demand for this culture. It's like a vicious circle. People uh, eventually are not longer even willing to get any cultural services. And here we have a very surprising thing. I started filming in Moscow in 1990s, but there was just one single shop window that was lift at night. McDonald's on Pushkin Square. That was the only place in the city where you could shoot at night anything other than darkness. And then Moscow erupted with money and fun, and I was shooting Moscow in the 90s and 2000s. And today, Moscow is different. Moscow's changed. It's not just a place where there's a lot of money. It's a place where there's a lot of meaning. It's a smart city now, and I'm hoping, and I believe, that problems of city district development will be dealt with just as smartly as city authorities dealt with city center. If we picture someone taking a bus in the outskirts of Moscow, in Metishi, or in Kapotnya, we'll see that this person lives in two realities. He's not looking out of the bus window. He's probably stuck in his cell phone. Well, younger people will be stuck with their cell phones. Elderly will probably be looking out of the window. So those smartphone folks live in two realities. One is behind the bus window, and the other one is in your cell phone. And it splits your personality in two. And it's dangerous because this brings about unhappiness, depression, and even worse, aggression. Internet can be dangerous in a sense because it is way ahead of reality. But at the same time, internet 
offers unique opportunities. For instance, there is this phenomena that's very relevant today. In small towns and small cities, there are social, there, there are groups on Facebook dedicated to a district or a town, and there are leaders of opinion that emerge, people that have incredible influence over others. And it would be smart, I think, for any city or town to support not just large global trends, but support those regional online communities and their leaders, because they're very close to common people. They understand what's on common people's agenda, what their needs are, and they're able to promptly respond to what's happening around them. So how would that happen in practice? I think it's what city authorities can and should do. If you are regulating everything in a city, you know, if you're regulating you know, transportation, uh, shop windows design or signboard design, why not manage local communities, online communities or online services that are important for people that live in different parts of town? So these local cultural processes can create myths and legends of a district and add meaning to people's lives in those districts because it takes a story, it takes a myth to build emotional affection to a place. Why do people come to larger cities, not just for services, not just to enjoy car sharing, but they follow their dreams. And cities represent those dreams for people. They meet their aspirations. And this is something I think that will happen in future. It took years for Moscow to be built, and it will take time for those communities to develop. But they will, especially if city authorities help those districts to build their local culture and identity. And online can help. Timur, tell me, you as a film director, what advice would you give to other film directors, you mean? I can only give advice to other film directors. I can't advise anything to people that run cities. But for the past few years, it so happened, I've been shooting movies uh, with cell phones, so we're working on a unique new language for cinema, uh, cinema language of the 21st century, especially for people that spend most of their free time looking at their mobile devices. So we're focusing on this part of our life, the one we spend online, and we try to make this online experience more humane. Adding, new, adding traditional notions of good, bad, evil, family, motherland, which are irrelevant to internet communities. Unless we do so, we're going to end up in trouble. Thank you. Sergei Semenovich, can I ask a question to you? Anything for you. You're the host. The idea of master plans is very much in line with everything that's happening in business today. We're deviating from large strategies. We're responding swiftly to challenges, to changing environment. But at the same time, there's the strategic vision, something very generic, very cumbersome. How do you make it work systemically, 
the micro and the macro levels. I have to deal with over 130 districts. Well, we're struggling. We're struggling. Well, you were an eyewitness at one of the events where an urban planner from London was present and who saying that we need to design our life completely, plan it all, split it into tiny parts and live according to plan. London is a big example, it's an exemplary city from the point of view of urban development, so I asked this urban planner, so do you have a master plan? I was like, what? No, we don't. I was like, but how do you live? Do you call it different, maybe? He says, no, we don't have anything like that. No general plan, no master plan. So I ask him, how does a city like London live without this basic document, policy document? He said, well, we have a vision, and we develop in line with this vision, and I support him. Although Moscow has master plan and a number of other urban planning documents, we still have to follow a vision, whether you have it or you don't. If you lack vision, you can come up with tons of plans, volumes of plans. You can invite leading experts, urban planners, designers, artists, but it's not going to work. You should have vision. It would follow, and your team should also support this vision. And then every district, every little house will develop. If you lack vision, if your goals differ from what you declare, no master plan would ever help you. Yeah, I remember. I remember you asking that guy from London about master plan, and he said, we have none, and everyone was like, what? London doesn't have a master plan? Yeah, I remember that. So we're nearing the end of our discussion. Can I, can I add something? Oleg spoke about the conflict of interest when designing certain public spaces. Well, what could be easier, one might think, that design a park or improve uh, a street or an inner yard? But you know what? It holds great conflict potential because a yard is very small, but people that live there are many from 8 to 80. But actually, there's more. It's from zero to 100. And everyone's got his own vision of what life should be, of what he needs. Someone wants to be active, others want to be quiet. Some say it should be a playground for kids, and others would say, no, I, I don't care. I don't care if it's dirty, I don't care if it's dark, but it's quiet. And that's all I need. So please just don't touch it. So finding compromise, striking balance, when designing a public space is our top priority. If we, if we succeed, uh, it's always a good project. Uh, sometimes we fail, and then there's conflict. Although amazing transformation happens sometimes. I remember in one of the central districts, locals were very unhappy with the design of a project. And we told them, OK, let's do it the way you want it. Tell us. It took them about a year and a half, two years. They worked with our designers, with our team. And they put together a project themselves. Uh, staircases and granite, dry fountains, and it was very, very good. It was perfect. And they thought, oh, we have a nice, quiet neighborhood, we're going to make it beautiful, and we'll spend time with our kids, with our elderly relatives, and we'll enjoy it. But it was so successful that it became exceptionally popular among the young ones. 
and teenagers with green, purple, red hair from all over Moscow come and spend time there. They enjoy it. So the project was a success, but are locals happy? No. They're very miserable. So it's a big city. Uh, it's a mega city of 20 million people. And if, it, if something interesting is happening, you need to keep in mind that within an hour, millions of people can be there. So you need to find balance between uniqueness and potential implications. You need to think ahead of how that's going to be used, how that's going to develop. Igor Shuvalov, and I thank him for that. He mentioned in his comments something that's really important that it has to do with economic development of a country, of cities in general. We used to think that all these economic fora were designed to attract investments and that what we traditionally do was the best possible format. So if you want to attract investments, you should tell people these are benefits you'll be given, uh, these are um, venues for your projects, come and you'll be happy. We've been saying it for years and it never worked, but that didn't really work because cities is, it is not how cities work. Cities are about the economy of services, about serving the needs of people. So when we started talking about improving infrastructure, streets, parks, or districts, one might think that we're just, we've, we've got more money than we can spend. But this is so not true. This really pays back. Once you improve quality of urban environment, that really does attract investors, investors in human capital, because more people are willing to stay and work for the city. And we see how the city transforms. You invest 2 to 3% of city budget in infrastructure improvement, and it really pays back. The volume of investment in Moscow grew by 70% over recent years, although we did nothing on purpose to attract these investments. But investors feel that the city is alive, that it's developing, that it's lively. And this is what we need to remember. It's not just about how it looks. It's about the substantial change that's happening in modern cities. And Tigran raised an important question when we talk about Moscow. For some reason, we compare it with Nizhny Novgorod, Vladimir, Oral, small towns in Russia, which is wrong. Because we don't compete with them, we compete with London, Paris, and other world cities. So if we have nothing to offer to Russians that seek higher quality of life, they will not come to small towns. They will go to other world cities. The borders are transparent. People can travel. People can go anywhere, including Kuala Lumpur. These are our competitors, not small towns in Russia. And Timur said another thing that was very striking about the two realities in which people live. It's not just internet, it's how human brain works. People live in their dreams and fantasies, and sometimes they become more real than reality. This is how men work and operate. That's always been. But. A city can be synonym to a dream. But for that to happen, a city, a district needs to have a future. And if you see your city changing, your district changing, that will inspire your dream, that will give you hope that change is possible, that change is happening, that you'll 
enjoy a new quality of life. And this will change people's attitude towards the district and towards the cities. Thank you very much, Sergey. I, I don't even know if I can sum up, because you've, you just did it beautifully. This idea of finding balance in a city, when the cityness is spread throughout the city, and every dweller of every district can find something to be proud of, this is very relevant. And I'm sure in every district you can find some unique identity, a park, a river, an old factory that was rebuilt into a public space, or it can be something hidden, deep in history, and we need to find those identities and make them into points of attraction. So we sometimes confuse causes and results. So we need to create comfortable environment and that will attract investment that will come at some incredible pace. Marat Husnulin said that every rubble invested in a road pays back with three rubbles immediately. So probably parks give you an even higher return on your investment. With this, colleagues, I suggest we adjourn this meeting. I thank very much all the participants, and I suggest we thank our speakers for the wonderful panel. So we'll move on to the business part of our program. Thank you.